Hi, I'm Tina Baker-Taylor, and thanks for joining us for Governance and Guardrails, our segment focused on all things regulatory and legal happening in the digital assets and crypto space. I'm delighted to be joined today by John Collins, partner at FS Vector, which is an advisory firm assisting firms like fintechs, regtechs, and financial institutions. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Tiana, thanks so much for having me. It's great to have you. So COVID-19 has starkly highlighted some serious gaps and limitations in our ability to disperse entitlement and relief payments to large groups of people and has further, further stimulated discussions around the digital dollar. Phase three of the U.S. relief package includes direct payments to Americans of $1,200, but the U.S. has struggled to get these payments into the hands of people. And Americans have been advised that if they don't have direct debit details on hand with the IRS already from a previous tax return, they could be waiting up to four months to receive their relief package. A staffer for Senator Grassley also commented that the US government is considering sending prepaid debit cards because it'll be faster than a check. Last month, three legislative proposals were made calling for the creation of digital dollar wallets. These proposals aim to upgrade the delivery and utility of relief and entitlement payments, issuing wallets to individuals as a means to get government stimulus money to them more quickly. Senator Brown and Representatives Waters and Tlaib have all introduced such ideas as part of their larger proposed COVID-19 aid and stimulus packages. So John, multiple senators have introduced ideas for how a digital dollar could be included within COVID-19 relief and stimulus packages. Could you give us a summary of the most interesting proposals you've seen and highlight some of the key differences between them and why they actually matter? Yeah, and, and you know, there really were three main proposals that, that were thrown out there and they were part of larger bills from, from those individual legislators. And this was during the time in advance of the last package when you know, people were throwing out a variety of different proposals to, to respond to the, the current kind of economic crisis. So um, they all included these three, a digital dollar, something that looked a lot like a digital dollar, um, but what that actually meant and how it would be implemented were, were different in each one. And so, you know, briefly, the, the Tlaib proposal from, from Congresswoman uh, Tlaib called for really what we would think of as a kind of pure central bank digital currency or, or CBDC, mm -hmm. you know, whereby the, the Fed, Federal Reserve, would directly develop and operate and manage a government digital currency and a, and a wallet system. So, um, you know, in addition to, you know, issuing debit cards, um, the proposal called for the creation of a permanent treasury administered digital public currency wallet system. Okay. Um, and that would be something that would again be developed by the Fed um, and would be something that would be implemented um, to, to uh, every individual in the United States. So essentially what that looks like is a universal Fed account for, for every US citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, where the Fed, you would have a, a bank account, a digital currency account, um, and the wallets would be managed uh, by the Federal Reserve. Um, you know, one thing that, that I note in that, that proposal is they did call for this e-cash system to be, you know, quote unquote, privacy respecting, which um, okay. is worth noting. What does that mean? So, I mean, I don't, it doesn't really go farther beyond uh, just the term privacy respecting, uh, but it, you know, I think if you look at the, the, you know, current Chinese CBDC that's being discussed, they are very much in control of everything in that network. They can see everything in that network. They can actually, as I understand, include, you know, throttling specific categories of payments if, if needed. So this, I think, is a, a gesture towards... A nod. A nod toward acknowledging that something right. is going to have to be in there preventing right. or protecting privacy. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, you know, the, the Waters proposal, and, and it's worth noting that Representative Waters is uh, the chairwoman of the House Financial Services Committee. Again, it was a larger bill, but the, the bill did call for the creation of a digital dollar wallet. And um, again, in addition to sort of the other stimulus payments, you know, ultimately what the bill called for was uh, Treasury uh, to create 
digital dollar wallets um, that would be again created by the Federal Reserve. Uh, a digital dollar is actually defined in the bill um, and uh, it, it is defined as a balance expressed as dollar value consisting of digital ledger entries that are recorded as liabilities in the accounts of any Federal Reserve Bank. Uh, okay. Say that two times twice and okay. <laughs> then the second one, the second definition or, or subset of that is an electronic unit of value uh, redeemable by any eligible financial institution as determined um, by the Fed. Okay, so let's pause there for a second. That's really interesting. And yeah. I think that language is really interesting. So an electronic unit of value redeemable by any eligible financial institution. So that sounds like it could allow for a lot of different types of digital currencies and tokens. Um, it sounds like the definition as written might open this up to anything the Fed would allow banks to redeem, right? That's what it sounds like. So is this an obvious candidate for a stable coin? Um, could this finally be a good external use case for something like JPM coin perhaps, or another crypto asset? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think certainly if you, you know, have a definition that says electronic unit of value redeemable by a financial institution, again, as long as the what Fed it, I mean, that could be any number of different things. Um, it could be all of the things that, that you just said. Now, I don't know if this was just a, um, you know, a, not a drafting error, but, but, you know, something that involved the drafting that led them to kind of have a broad um, uh, definition to allow perhaps room for the Fed or Treasury to implement it in some way. I'm not sure what the exact, um, you know, intent was on, on the part of uh, the Congresswoman. Uh, but that definition, in, in my view, and in the view of, of a number of others, is very open to, you know, other digital currencies. Okay, so hearing about the idea of a digital dollar popping up over and over again and legislative proposals, um, what do they actually mean by what you, know, you just mentioned? Do they know what they're saying when they use this terminology? Um, I don't know, but it does kind of indicate to me that policymakers are becoming increasingly more familiar with the idea of tokenization. Um, and that there seems to be a growing consensus for this kind of innovation around digital money um, we're seeing this over and over in new legislative proposals, right? Um, so at a minimum, it seems to be that people agree that payments need to be faster. Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think, you know, this crisis in particular, you know, it moves very, very quickly. I mean, by the nature, I think, of, of the virus itself, by the nature, I think, of just the way markets work now, uh, you know, it's, it's moving really quickly. And checks, look, I mean, I think they're just too slow, especially for some people to, to receive and actually have an impact on their individual lives and the larger, you know, economics. So, you know, separate digital currencies or CBDCs or Bitcoin or, or all of that, you know, we, 10 years past the, the financial crisis, the payment system and the way people interact with money, whether it's PayPal or Venmo or Square Cash, it's just entirely different. So I think what some of these proposals reflect is an understanding that A, consumers are using money in a different way. Mm -hmm. And two, wouldn't it be nice if the Fed or the Treasury could just zap dollars into someone's hands um, rather than even wait for direct deposit or, or, or certainly checks? Sure. Well, and in Europe, I mean, we have in the UK where I am, you know, we have faster payments. So, you know, those payments are literally instant most of the time. Um, but again, the government struggles a little bit with a big disbursement program when you have, you know, millions of people that are requiring payments. So, you know, we often comment on the US and infrastructure gap between, you know, kind of yesteryear and today. Um, but I don't think they're alone in this problem. And, and certainly, you know, digitized currencies um, would enable that to be significantly faster. So what's the timeline for this? Um, we're seeing this pop up in legislation, but I have a funny feeling that uh, it's not gonna happen 
you know, in this, in this stimulus package, right? Are we, are we talking this year? Are we talking three years from now? What, what do you think the timeline is? Yeah, okay, I, I don't know. I mean, look, I, I certainly do not think that these proposals, and they're, and they're gonna pop up again. I know Senator Brown has a proposal that's very similar to the Waters one. It does not include that electronic unit of value definition, but essentially everything else is, is, is pretty much the same. He said he's going to you know, reintroduce this idea, and we are going to have another stimulus bill that's kind of already in flight and probably will happen in the next month or, or, or two. But, you know, I don't expect those to be in anything that ha happens over the next year. I do think once we are back to somewhat of a sense of normalcy, there's going to be a revisiting of a lot of different things in the economy and the financial system, mm -hmm. um, especially if we, you know, have a change in the White House. And so I would be very surprised if these ideas in some form or fashion do not continue some kind of momentum, whether it's a part of a task force or you know, continued um, conversations amongst industry to present these solutions. I, I do think it is certainly the continuation and really the beginning of, of this conversation that, that will happen over the next you know, several years. Okay, so you know, potentially not necessarily gonna happen overnight, but it is um, a, a nod by the government that uh, digital currencies have a place potentially in a wider financial ecosystem. Um, and that's certainly positive. I, I think anytime we have policymakers um, talking in this language that Representative Waters is using, I think it's pretty encouraging, don't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's not only Congress. I mean, the Federal Reserve is doing some significant work uh, and, and hosting conversations around, you know, these ideas. Um, you know, the idea of a, of a direct Fed account is not a new one, but, mm. but the digital currency aspect of it, of it is new, mm. uh, for sure. Okay. Well, John, thank you so much for talking us through the nuances around these different proposals. I think sometimes um, reading, you know, big legislative bills um, are, are daunting to many of us. So it's awesome that you've had an opportunity to break it down for us. From my personal view, I think it's exciting that discussions around adopting and implementing digital currencies is continuing to increase. I think that's really positive. Um, and it would be amazing if this COVID crisis, you know, really encouraged our governments to be more nimble and look into the future and medium term of giving people better access to financial services and support that they need when they actually need it, right? Yeah. Um, Amazing. John, if people um, would like to get in touch with you to learn more about this or perhaps what you guys do at FS Vector, how can they do that? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you could visit fsvector.com um, and I'm also on Twitter. It's just John Collins, not the NBA player. Uh, we're a bit different. Um, I'm about <laughs> a foot and a half <laughs> shorter than him, uh, probably. But uh, yeah, just John Collins on Twitter and, and fsvector.com. Um, people can certainly get in touch with me on, on, on this issue or, or any other kind of work around the policy world, um, especially around digital currencies and blockchain. We pay pretty close attention to it. That's awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today, John. It was great. Thanks so much for having me, Tana. Cheers.